Hello students, welcome to my channel Omni Gyan. Uh, today we are going to learn a very interesting poem actually and quite an emotional poem. Uh, the name of the poem is Our Casuar in a Tree and uh, it is written by or it is rather composed by Thuru Dutt. This is uh, Thuru Dutt, okay. Uh, there are very f rare pictures of uh, uh, very few pictures of Thoru that in fact uh, in the internet so I've got uh, one which was available and let's learn a short biography so Thoru Dutt, as you can see was born on 4th March 1856 and uh, she expired on 30th of August 1877 so her age was very less okay if you calculate you'll see that uh, she was just 21 years when she expired and sometimes uh, she is compared with John Keats also John Keats is an English poet who died at the age of 25 very tender age actually okay very young age at the age of 25 only and she was a Bengali translator and poet from uh, the Indian subcontinent okay from India who wrote in English so she was a Bengali translator she translated things uh, from Bengali to English uh, but uh, and she wrote poems in English actually okay so she wrote in English and not only in English in French language also in what was then British India so at that time obviously it was British India you can note uh, the year here okay so she is among the founding figures of Indo-Anglian literature okay uh, alongside Henry Lewis Vivian de Rosio Henry de Rosio actually okay Henry, uh, Henry de Rosio was also another great poet uh, from Calcutta and uh, Toru Dutt is among the founding figures of Indo-Anglian literature, okay? Indo-Anglian means Indo-India-Anglian English. So, Indian English literature, actually. Alongside Henry de Rosio, uh, Henry de Rosio, 1809 to 1831. Uh, there were some other um, founding figures like Manmohan Ghosh uh, from 1869 to 1924, okay? Birth and death. And Sarojini Naidu. Okay, you have learned in English also Sarojini Naidu's poem, The Gift of India. Uh, she also wrote in English. Um, again, another founding figure of the Indo-Anglian literature, Indian and English. Okay, so Indian English literature, 1879 to 1949. Her uh, birth and death. Okay. And uh, she is known, uh, the biography continues, she is known for her volumes of poetry in English. So, she wrote a number of poems. Uh, all in English, like a sheaf gleaned, gleaned in French fields, which was published in 1877, and then Ancient Ballads and Legends of Hindustan, 1882. And she also wrote a novel in French. Okay, you can imagine uh, a person from India writing in French, not only in English, but in French. Okay, uh, and uh, the novel, the name of the novel was Le Journal de Mademoiselle. D. Ervers, which was published in 1879, and her poems revolve around themes of loneliness, longing, longing means waiting for something, okay, uh, a kind of a desire, patriotism, nostalgia. So, these are the themes which are found in the poem, in her poems actually. And in fact, in this poem also, we find similar kind of a thing like loneliness, longing, nostalgia. Patriotism is not here uh, in the in the particular poem, Our Castle in a Tree, but you find the themes of loneliness, longing, and nostalgia. Nostalgia means something, uh, you know, like uh, when you grow up, you turn uh, an old man or a woman, and then you start uh, thinking about your uh, childhood days, and you miss those days. That is called nostalgia, okay? I just gave an example. So, Toru Dutt died at the age of 21. I just told you, very tender age, okay? And that is why sometimes... Um, which has led to some comparisons of her with the poet John Keats. John Keats actually died at the age of 25, okay? And John Keats died at the age of 25. And that is why sometimes Toru Dutt is compared um, with the poet uh, John Keith, Keats, all right? And Toru Dutt was a brilliant poet. As we learn the poem, you'll see it's a very long poem, and I'll try to explain everything. And I have got stanza-wise explanation. In fact... Uh, line by line explanation not only stanza wise i have gone line by line explanation you need to listen very carefully so this is stanza one uh, each of the stanzas are very long actually okay so let me read it very quickly 
like a huge python winding round and round the rock trunk indented deep with scars up to its very summit near the stars a creeper climbs in whose embraces bound no other tree could live but gallantly the giant wears a scarf and flowers are hung in crimson clusters all the boughs among whereon all day are gathered bird and bee and oft at nights the garden overflows with one sweet song that seems to have no close sung darkling from our tree while men repose so i would uh, request all of you to keep your book your all your books in front of you because i cannot uh, go back while i explain okay so please uh, keep your books in front of you because as i explain you can mark with your pencils okay the important meanings and the important explanations of the important lines this is casuarina tree and this is this tree uh, is actually found in australia okay this is found ma- majorly this is found in australia okay and she talks of this tree okay and similar kind of you see a kind of uh, how would i say you know fruit uh, this kind of this kind of thing grows on the tree okay so this is basically casuarina tree so explanation of stanza 1 the poem is actually an ode to the casuarina tree that the poetess had in her garden back in her motherland so her motherland is bengal west bengal calcutta so you see that west bengal let me put it in this way so the poet actually addresses a tree called casuarina tree and this tree actually this tree grew in her garden okay in her garden uh, in a hometown okay in a homeland and uh, in her garden act- actually and there are many memories that she has with the tree so the memory of the tree is the only link she has left with her past and the cheerfulness of her formative years now this is i told you know that this is a theme of nostalgia actually okay this is theme of nostalgia you are missing something very much now you are a grown up person and uh, you miss your childhood you miss your friends you miss all those things you know that is called you become nostalgic emotional that is nostalgia remembering the past and becoming sad that is nostalgia so actually she this this poet actually turudath has got plenty of memory theek hai poet ke sath jo hai is kasurina tree ki bahut sari memories judi hui hai okay aur use wo yaad kar rahi hai abhi she is remembering all those things and she is getting a bit of like sad also okay so that memory is the only link she has left with her past and the cheerfulness of her formative years okay to is kasurina tree ke bare mein poet soch rahi hai और बहुत कुछ कहती है वो वो क्या कहती है देखते हैं हम लोग धीरे धीरे सो द फर्स्ट टाइम आर डिस्क्राइब द ट्री हैविंग रफ स्किन स्किन कॉस्ड बाई स्कास कट बाक्स ओके तो पोइट ये कहती है कि वो जो कैसोर ट्री है उसके जो जो उसका जो ब्रांच है ब्रांच पे बहुत सारे कट मार्क्स हैं देर आर प्लेटी ऑफ कट मार्क्स एंड द कट मार्क्स आर डिस्क्राइब्ड एज कार्स हम लोगों के चेहरे पर या हाथों पर या कहीं पर जब कोई कट लग जाता है तो कट के मार्क्स रह जाते हैं ना कट मार्क कट मार्क्स आर लेफ्ट इन आर बॉडी इफ इट गेट्स कट बाई अ नाइफ और समथिंग नो दैट इज कॉल्ड स्कार ओके एंड डिस्पाइट ऑल दिस इट प्रोवाइड सपोर्ट टू अ क्रीपर हैविंग फ्लावर्स क्रीपर आप लोगों को पता है अ क्लाइंबिंग प्लांट ओके जो कि एक जैसे एक पेड़ है इस पेड़ को सर्कल करके 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 एक कोई टाइनी सा प्लांट उठता है जैसे ग्रीप्स ओके दो द क्रीपर्स है ना इट रिंग्स around the trunk like a snake to ye jo creeper hai to ye to kaise this is the casuarina tree so you see the tree is very old okay the tree is very old tree bahut purana ho chuka hai lekin fir bhi still then it is giving support to this creeper okay and that is winding and winding and growing around the coiling around the uh, trunk of the casuarina tree okay so the poet describes it as a python as a snake okay like a python this creeper is creeping this creeper is creeping and this casuarina tree is actually supporting the creeper okay to is creeper ko jo hai describe kiya gaya hai python ki tarah like a snake this describes the strength and courage of the tree which is still standing tall so the casuarina tree is still there okay poet ke jo garden hai 
the garden of the poet that casuarina tree is still there and the poet uh, every day the poet watches the casuarina tree and she and the sight of the casuarina tree us casuarina tree ko dekhte hi poet ko jo hai apne bachpan ki yaad aa jati hai okay she uh, the casuarina tree actually reminds her of her childhood so the tree is as a paragon of strength to pear jo hai bahut shaktishali it is be very strong despite so many years have gone okay so many years have gone but still the tree is standing tall and high and strong okay and it is supporting the creeper also okay it is supporting a creeper and that creeper coiling around the tree is described as a python okay as a big snake right then the tree is forever loved and adorned with flowers and birds and bees so sirf poet hi nahi ye jo pair hai itna acha hai ye pair this this tree is so lovely that even birds and bees okay love the tree so much that they keep on visiting the tree sitting on its branches okay and uh, the tree has uh, beautiful flowers hanging around okay and uh, when it is dark and all humans are in deep sleep the tree sings quietly so jab raat ho jata hai when uh, it is night time or it is dark aur sare jo insaan hai wo so jate hain all the human beings they are in deep sleep uh, the tree sings quietly ye tree jo hai ye bahut dheere dheere dheeme dheeme ye gana gaati hai ya gana gaate hain okay the tree sings very quietly okay and only uh people with strong feelings can actually connect with nature and hear these things right everybody does not have the power to connect with nature there are few special people who actually have this power to connect with nature and they can like wordsworth is there okay they can connect with nature immediately and those are uh, unheard things that normal people cannot hear these poets with strong ima- ima- uh, imagination they hear all these things okay let's move on stanza 2 When first my casement is wide open thrown and dawn my eyes delighted on its rest sometimes and most in winter on its crest a grey baboon baboon is a monkey sits statue like alone watching the sunrise while on lower boughs his puny ops- offspring offspring means ye jo baboon hai ye bandar jo hai monkey iske bacche his puny offspring leap about and play one thing let me tell you okay before i go you can also search the meanings from the dictionary okay you can also search the meaning from the dictionary this will increase your vocabulary also and i am explaining already to you okay i am already explaining uh, so you can search for the meanings you can search and you see you can connect those meanings with my explanation that will create that will you know uh, give you more insight uh, into the poem okay and far and near coquillas coquillas are quail birds okay cuckoo bird coquillas quail hail the day and to their pastures when the sleepy cows and in the shadow on the broad tank cast by that whole tree so beautiful and vast the water lily spring like snow and mast let us now learn the explanation now the poet says that when she opens a window in the early morning her eyes are delighted to see the tree okay so early morning when the poet opens a window she becomes very happy uh, to see the tree ठीक है तो पोएट अपनी खिड़की खोलती है जब सुबह सुबह अर्ली मॉर्निंग एकदम अर्ली मॉर्निंग सुबह सुबह जब खिड़की खोलती है और उस ट्री को देखती है तो वो बहुत खुश हो जाती है अब वेदर इट इज समर और इट इज़ विंटर ओके वेदर इट इज़ समर और विंटर हर मॉर्निंग रिमेन्स इनकम्प्लीट विदाउट द साइट ऑफ द ट्री तो चाहे वो समर सीजन हो या विंटर सीजन हो पोएट जो है एक दिन भी मिस नहीं करती है उस ट्री को ओके okay? और उस ट्री को देखे बिना पोएट का दिन Uh, नहीं बनता है एक्चुअली या नहीं बनती है ओके विदाउट सीइंग दैट ट्री द यू नो द होल डे ऑफ द पोएट रिमेन्स वेरी इनकम्प्लीट ओके सो वेद इट समर और विंटर एवरी मॉर्निंग द पोएट विल ओपन अ विंडो एंड सी द ट्री एंड शी वुड सी दैट ओफेन अ बबून आई टोल्ड यू बबून इज अ मंकी ओफेन अ बबून वुड सिट ऑन द टॉप ऑफ द ट्री लाइक अ स्टैचू वॉचिंग द सन तो एक बंदर जो है वो ट्री के बिल्कुल एकदम टॉप पे वो बैठे होते हैं ओके अब मंकी वुड बी सिटिंग ऑन द टॉप ऑफ टॉप ऑफ द ट्री लाइक अ स्टैचू एंड वाचिंग द सनराइज ओके या सनशाइन वो सनशाइन को वो बंदर जो है वो देखता रहता है और सिर्फ बंदर ही नहीं बंदर के बच्चे भी आते हैं सो ऑन द ब्रांचेस डाउन तो क्योंकि छोटे बच्चे जो है बंदर के जो छोटे बच्चे यू नो द बबून्स बेबीज ओके दे के नॉट क्लाइम एट सच अ हाइट ऑफ द ट्री सो दे प्ले टू द लोअर ब्रांचेज एक्चुअली ऑन द लोअर ब्रांचेज एक्चुअली 
so on the lower branches the baboons babies have fun and they play so they keep on jumping okay they keep on jumping and playing uh, the kids the babies of the baboon and the kokilas the quail bird also welcomes the day with its sweet melody to so early morning jab hota hai to uh, in order to welcome the day the quail bird will also start singing okay so this is a description actually that um, not only the poet but uh, how much dear that cassowary in a tree is to the other animals also animals birds bees monkeys then the sleepy or lazy cows go to the green pastures the shadow of the tree falls on the tank so you see to kuch lazy jo gai hote cows they go to the green pastures to green pastures mein niche ke line mein batata hu actually ye exactly kya hai to they go to the green pastures to eat grass okay and they are very lazy in the morning and kyunki tree bahut bada hai because the tree is very big so the shadow of the tree it falls on a tank okay there's a tank uh, somewhere and the shadow of the tree falls on the tank okay all right now ab yahan hum log thoda dekhte hain let's just uh, you know continue this explanation here also that even the tree's shadow gives shelter or refuge to the lazy cattle and water lilies to ye tree jo hai iska jo shadow hai the tree's shadow okay uh, this tree is so, so much you see uh, you know it has such a big heart in one way we can say kitna bada dil hai iska ke this tree actually the shadow of this tree gives shelter or refuge to these lazy cattle ye jo cows hai in lazy cattle ko ye chhao deta hai or not only that even the water lilies okay even the water lilies okay uh, lily is a flower as you know that uh, grows on water ओके तो वाटर लिलीज को भी ये जो है छाव देता है और द शेडो फॉल्स ऑन देम एज इफ एंड इट लुक्स लाइक एज इफ इट इज कवर्ड बाई स्नो ओके द वे द ट्री यू नो गिव्स इट्स इट्स शेडो टू द लेजी कैटल एंड वाटर लिलीज इट लुक्स लाइक एज इफ इट इज एक्चुअली कवर्ड बाई स्नो और राइट लेट्स मूव ऑन विथ स्टैंड थ्री I hope you have understood, but not because of its magnificence. Dear is the casuarina to my to my soul. Beneath it we have played, though years may roll. O oh, sweet companions, loved with love intense, for your sakes shall the tree be ever dear. Blend with your images, it shall arise in memory till the hot tears blind mine. What is the dirge? like murmur that i hear like the sea breaking on a shingle beach it is the tree's lament and eerie speech that happily to the unknown land may reach okay so the poet says that but not because of its magnificence dear is the casuarina to, uh, to my soul the poet is telling that it is not just the magnificence of the tree that has attracted the poet towards the tree okay not only because the tree is magnificent or because the tree is very beautiful or tall or strong okay not because of that not only because of that okay you may feel that the poet is attracted uh, towards the tree because um, the tree is very strong the tree is very st- tall the t- uh, all um, you know the bees birds uh, they all come to the tree baboons say babies no it's babies no there is an emotional attachment actually okay there's also an emotional attachment and what is that emotional attachment but there was an emotional attachment or emotional bond to the tree as well not only because of the physical qualities of the tree but because there is a certain emotional attachment also that the poet was attracted to the tree and that there is a very strong emotional bonding and what is that bonding See, there's a story here. The poet, as a child, had played under the tree along with her friends. So this is the main reason, actually, that when the poet was a small child, poet जब एक छोटा बच्चा था, okay, and when she was a small child, ah, वो अपने दोस्तों के साथ उस पेड़ के नीचे खेलती थी. She would play with her friends along with her friends under the tree. So whenever she saw the cassowary in a tree, she was reminded of her childhood. तो जब भी वो खिड़की खोल के कैसे और इन ट्री को देखती है या जब भी देखती है उस ट्री को तो अपना बचपन की याद उसको आ जाती है शी द ट्री एक्चुअली रिमाइंड्स हर ऑफ अ चाइल्डहुड 
और सिर्फ नॉट ओनली ऑफ अ चाइल्ड इवन अ चाइल्ड फ्रेंड्स ऑल्सो ओके बचपन में जिन दोस्तों के साथ वो खेला करती थी उन दोस्तों की याद भी पोइट को आ जाती है ओके एंड दैट इज़ वेयर द इमोशनल पॉइंट इज ओके एंड द टाइम शी स्पेंड विद अ फ्रेंड्स सो दिस इज वॉट आई सेड ओके नॉट ओनली ऑफ हर ओन चाइल्ड बट इवन ऑफ द टाइम दैट शी हैज स्पेंड विद अ फ्रेंड्स ऑल्सो तो अपने दोस्तों के साथ मिलकर उस पेड़ के नीचे वो लोग खेलते थे कई तरीके के खेल खेलते थे मे बी हाइड एंड सीक यू नो दिस एंड दैट ओके सो दिस इज द इमोशनल पॉइंट देन शी एड्रेसेज हर चाइल्ड हुड फ्रेंड सेंग दैट द ट्री रिमाइंड हर ऑफ देम ऑल्सो तो मैंने अभी अभी कहा आई जस्ट टोल यू दैट नॉट ओनली ऑफ हर ओन चाइल्ड हुड बट इवन द ट्री रिमाइंड हर ऑफ हर चाइल्ड हुड फ्रेंड ऑल्सो बचपन के दोस्त की भी Uh, याद जो है पोइट को जब भी वो पेड़ को देखती है तो पोइट को याद आ जाती है कि बचपन में कितने दोस्त थी ओके okay? कितने दोस्त थे शी वंडर्स ऑफ अ मॉर्निंग सॉन्ग डर्ज मतलब अ मॉर्निंग ओके दुख भरा गाना डर्ज कोई जब चला जाता है ना वेन समबडी लीव्स परमानेंटली मॉर्निंग इज ऑफ एन रेफर टू डेथ मार्क द स्पेलिंग ओके एम ओ आर एन आई एन जी मॉर्निंग मतलब सुबह मॉर्निंग टाइम time of the day and m o u r n i n g is a sad song okay generally these kind of songs are sung or are sang when somebody dies actually okay but here the poet says that uh, here it means that not only death but here it means that when something is gone and is never going to return like the childhood of the poet that is n- never going to return back all right and many of the poet's friends Uh, some of oh, not many maybe some of the poet's friends have died also and they are never going to return so that is why a dirge okay a morning song so she wonders of a morning sound okay and realizes that the tree crying and trying to give a message okay so the poet can hear a crying melody a crying tune and that is coming from the casuar in a tree us tree se jo hai ek rone ki awaaz aa rahi hai aur पोइट वो सुन सकती है ओके okay? और वो पोइट और वो ट्री जो है कुछ मैसेज देना चाह चाहता है द ट्री वांट्स टू गिव अ मैसेज दैट विल रीच टू सम अननोन लैंड तो वो मैसेज जो है किसी अननोन लैंड में जाएगा ओके इट इज़ नॉट गोइंग टू कम टू द पोइट बट दैट मैसेज इज गोइंग टू रीच टू सम अननोन लैंड ठीक है वो दुख भरा जो एक गाना है और उस गाने के अंदर कुछ मैसेज है दे इज़ अ मॉर्निंग सॉन्ग एंड In that song, there is a message, but that message will reach to some unknown land. Now, stanza four, unknown yet well known to the eye of faith. Ah, I have heard that wail far. Wail मतलब कोई जब जोर जोर से रोता है और वो रोना जब बहुत strong होता है. Okay, uh, it generally happens when somebody dies. Okay, uh, say uh, at the husband's death, how the wife cries. Okay, that is called a wail. So I have heard that wail far, far away, in distant lands by many a sheltered bay, when slumbered in his cave the water wraith, and the waves gently kissed the classic shore of France or Italy beneath the moon, when earth lay tranced in a dreamless swoon, and every time the music rose before mine inner vision rose a form sublime, thy form, O tree, as in my happy prime, I saw thee in my own loved native. climb and the explanation of this is now this land is unknown but still she is known by those people who have faith in her okay ye land jo hai this land is actually the netherland netherland matlab not uh, the country netherland okay other world you can say that this country is another world where dead people go right where dead people go so this land is unknown obviously we do not know living people do not know about this land but still she is known by those people here she refers to the poet the poet is actually known by those people and those people actually have faith in her in the poet can you tell me who those people are we can guess those people are actually the friends of the poet who have died and have gone to the other world and they are never going to return but these friends actually have full faith in the poet have full trust in the poet and 
the poet is known by these people actually and these people are we can guess actually from the interpretation we can uh, from the understanding reading of the lines we can guess that these people the poet is referring by these people the poet is referring to her friends who have gone to the other world and these friends actually know the poet obviously they have played during childhood so these people will definitely know the poet and these people have faith in her also okay then the poet is in the fourth stanza also talks of how the lament lament is like uh, when somebody goes away and you keep on crying okay that is a lament okay uh, and you keep on expecting that that person will return back okay that is lament lamenting so how the lament of the tree can be heard by her even when she is far away off the coasts of france and italy okay so the poet is says that the lament of the tree can be heard by her iska matlab wo tree ka jo rona hai the crying of the tree the sorrow of the tree can be heard by the poet even when she is far away okay in the earlier lines we have learned that uh, the crying of the tree will reach to some unknown land right so the poet is not there in the unknown land poet to unknown land mein nahi hai poet is in her own practical land practical life real life right she is not in that other world but still even if the poet is far away from that unknown land still the poet can hear the crying the sorrow of the tree okay so heard by her even when she is far away off the coasts of france and italy okay she is far away she is far away in the and this this crying can be heard in france and then in italy also and into some you know other unknown lands also okay so uh, the the wail the crying of the tree is not limited to a certain area it, it is spreading far far away okay like you have learned in the solitary reaper okay that uh, the song of the solitary reaper will reach the distant lands okay she hears this song whenever she is near the coasts so when whenever she is there in the coast of france and italy the poet can hear this song okay the poet can hear this song strolling under the moonlight so during night time whether there is a moon shining and the poet is like you know walking here the poet is walking uh, so there is a moon shine okay moonlight so when she is strolling uh, she is having a walk still at that time she can hear this song of the tree and immediately the poet is reminded of the casuarina tree see every time the poet cannot be around the casuarina tree right because the casuarina tree is um in a garden and the poet does not every time stay in a house sometimes say for example if the poet is outside taking a walk far away from her home okay when the poet is far away from her home still then walking under the moonlight even taking up walk at night under the moonlight at that time also she can hear this song of the casuarina tree and immediately she remembers the tree okay the tree is thus a symbol of a friendship so the tree has actually become a symbol of her friendship and the tree always as i have already told you this is just a repetition and the tree always reminds her of her friends to tree jo hai ek friendship ki symbol hai ek friendship ka symbol hai sirf wahi nahi jab bhi wo tree ko dekhti hai ya jab bhi wo melody poet ko sunai deti hai to she and that melody reminds her of her friends to friends ke bare mein wo yaad karti hai tab stanza 5 which is the last stanza therefore i feign would consecrate a lay unto thy honor tree beloved of those who now in blessed sleep for a sleep for air repose dearer than life to me alas where they miss thou be numbered when my days are done with deathless trees like those in borodale borodale is actually a valley okay it it is a valley uh, under those under whose awful branches lingered pale fear trembling hope and death the skeleton and uh, time the shadow and though weak the words that would die beauty fain o fain rehearse may love defend thee from oblivion's curse so this is the last stanza as i told you so in the last stanza she says that she would gladly create a monument in the honor of the tree okay consecrate uh, in thy honor theek hai to 
द पोएट जो है ट्री को ऑनर करना चाहती है द पोएट वॉन्ट्स टू ऑनर द ट्री एंड शी वुड लाइक टू बिल्ड अ मोन्यूमेंट फॉर द ट्री शी ऑल्सो विशेज द पोइट ऑल्सो विशेज दैट द ट्री ग्रो फॉर ईयर्स टू कम एंड बी काउंटेड इन द लिस्ट ऑफ द डेथलेस ट्रीज तो यू नो दैट देर आर मेनी ट्रीज विच लिव फॉर अ लॉन्ग लॉन्ग पीरियड ऑफ टाइम राइट लाइक वी हैव द बैनियन ट्री ऑल्सो बैनियन ट्री ग्रोज फॉर यू नो मोर देन अ हंड्रेड ईयर्स and there are certain trees that actually uh you know grows for a longer period of time so the poet wishes that this casuarina tree also um you know lives for a long long time okay this casuarina tree also lives for a long time and it is included in the list of the other deathless trees to dusre jo pair hai mahan mahan jo dusre pair are the great great trees other trees actually the poet says that uh she actually wants the casuarina tree also to be included in the list of the deathless trees trees of borodil borodil is a valley in england as i told you it is a valley in england okay so borodil is a valley a uh, valley in england and wordsworth like wordsworth has also written many poems based on uh, setting is based on borodil okay so yaha ye jo borodil hai yaha pe kai sare aise ped paaye jate hain jo ki bahut lambe samay ke liye jo hai wo jeevit hai zinda hai okay the tree the trees have not died actually so uh the poet wishes torudat uh, wishes that uh, the casuarina tree lives for a long period of time and is included in the list of the deathless trees which are found in borodil okay which sheltered death and even time okay so which sheltered death and even time means these trees have become quite like immortal okay like we have uh, we live for a period of time and then we die right but these trees have actually like uh, overcome that particular thing uh, like they are alive okay 100 years more than 100 years 150 years gone still they are alive okay so the poet also speaks about her siblings brothers and sisters okay who are now dead and were very dear to her so obviously the poet had her brothers and sisters uh, who had died actually and these brothers and sisters were very dear to her however she has faith that all will be reunited after the brief spell of the false sleep of death so she says that the poet says that one day the poet will also die right one day the poet will also the poet will also die and along with her death she will go to the other world and there she will re unite with her siblings with her brothers and sisters reunite with her brothers and sisters okay so when the days will be over she'll die and with that death actually uh, all of them will be reunited maybe her friends also okay she will be reunited with her friends also who have died okay so the poet is actually not lamenting not sad because she is going to die after some times whenever it is okay whenever a time is over she is going to die she is not uh, sad with that she is rather like uh, quite satisfied that when i die when this brief spell of the sleep okay will be over uh, and i will die so we will again reunite okay she finally wishes that her love become so strong that it save the casuarina tree from its death okay she says that her love become so strong that the casuarina tree uh does not die hum log kehte hai na ke tumko hamari nazar lag jaye hum log kehte hai na tumko meri umar lag jaye when we wish wish somebody happy birthday hum log jab kisi ko happy birthday wish karte to we tell that person ke meri nazar tumko lag jaye meri umar tumko lag jaye right it is our love for that person that we say like that that we tell like that so similarly here also the poet is telling that meri jo umar hai wo bhi is casuarina tree ko lag jaye aur is casuarina tree ka jo umar hai aur lamba hota jaye aur ye kabhi na mare okay even my age you know i would like to gift my age also to this tree okay through my strong love for the tree i would like to gift my age also to the tree so that the tree lives longer and never dies okay so this means that the poet wants the tree to become immortal okay making the tree immortal so the poet wishes to say that i want to honor the tree 
by making a monument i want to honor the tree by making it immortal and this immortal thing comes from her strong love towards the casuarina tree all right i hope you're understanding all right so uh, this was stanza five and the end of the poem here i hope all of you have liked it okay and if there is any confusion uh, over anything i would like all of you to do a research on the word meanings and match it with the explanations that i have done so that what happens is that when you do that what happens is that you can connect your word meanings with the explanations and it will enable you to understand uh, things in a better manner all right and if there is any confusion please feel free to comment in the comment box and you can now connect me on facebook also okay uh, i will be giving the facebook link in the description box below so please go and check out the facebook page and follow me in the page uh, because i as i told you that after some times uh, i will be uploading uh, all informations on uh, about uh, the state board uh, exams share notes with you questions and answers with you okay especially class uh, 10 9 and 10 both but especially class 10 because uh, i'll be solving like question papers uploading question papers there and then discussion forums will go on there okay so please uh, subscribe this channel and uh, follow me on facebook also like the video please like the video and share the video among your friends and tell them to subscribe the channel all right so that's all from me today um, we'll meet in some other video so with love omnigan thank you so much and all the best stay safe